The alien had stepped up to the podium, his face drained of color, his feathers quivered. Then he spoke into the microphone and told every non-human civilization in the galaxy the chilling truth they'd all been dreading. Humans are the most dangerous species we've ever encountered. The Orion leader Cygnus tried to steady his wings as he continued addressing the Galactic Assembly on Centauri Station, but he couldn't disguise the horror and fear in his voice. Just two cycles ago, Cygnus thought the biggest problem facing the Orion Republic was a minor trade dispute with the Xenasians. Then a human ship arrived at Orion Prime, requesting permission to dock. A young explorer named Patrick Thompson said he represented a species called humans, who were eager to establish diplomatic relations and cultural exchange. Cygnus had never heard of humans before, but initial scans of their small shuttlecraft immediately set off alarms. The ship bristled with advanced weaponry, shielding, and armor, military technology far surpassing anything the Orions or any other race possessed. It looked like a warship built for heavy combat, not a diplomatic vessel. When Cygnus met this human Patrick in person, he seemed friendly and non-threatening enough, until an Orion engineer made an offhand comment about the human's excessive armaments. Patrick just laughed. Where I come from, you never know what you'll run into, he said. Pirates, hostile aliens, cosmic anomalies that can rip your ship apart. In our part of the galaxy, this is just sensible precaution. That comment chilled Cygnus to the bone. What kind of civilization thought it was normal to arm a diplomatic ship to the teeth? Just what horrors lurked in human space that they needed such weaponry for simple travel and defense? And if this was their idea of a lightly armed explorer vessel, Cygnus shuddered to imagine what actual human warships looked like. Cygnus had immediately ordered the human confined to a secure living unit until the Orion High Council could assess this possible threat. While the human was detained, Orion Intelligence Services worked frantically to gather more data on this mysterious new species. What they uncovered terrified them. Long-range scans detected a rapidly expanding sphere of human colonies and conquered worlds, all heavily militarized. Orion spies intercepted communications about human fleets armed with world-cracking weapons moving to subdue or eradicate species who resisted them. There were even whispers that the humans had defeated dreaded alien monstrosities and cosmic horrors out in the uncharted fringes of space. As the evidence mounted that humans were hyper-aggressive, hyper-militaristic, and spreading unchecked, many Orions began calling for a preemptive strike arguing they needed to neutralize the human threat before it was too late. Cygnus privately agreed that drastic action might be necessary against such a danger. But then a Kruznar raider ship attacked Orion Prime without warning, something that hadn't happened in centuries. The Orion fleet, atrophied by generations of peace, was slow to respond. Their outdated defenses crumbled before the assault. They faced catastrophic losses. Until Patrick offered to help, Cygnus reluctantly gave him access to the orbital defense grid, allowing Patrick to interface the human's powerful weapons and advanced targeting systems. That turned the tide. The human tech tore the Kruzner raiders to shreds with horrifying ease. In minutes, the attackers were neutralized, captives ready for interrogation. Under questioning, the Kruznar captain revealed they'd only attacked because the Orions seemed weak and vulnerable an easy target to plunder. The real monsters to fear, he said, were the humans, relentlessly conquering everything in their path, defeating threats that had menaced the galaxy for eons. As Patrick stood over the alien captive, Cygnus saw something in the human's eyes, a hardness, an unflinching instinct for violence and cunning that sent a shiver down his spine. In that moment, he realized how dangerous this new species truly was. Now, as Cygnus stood before the Galactic Assembly, he knew the horrible truth. The galaxy stood on a precipice. If the other star-faring races didn't find a way to contain humanity's aggressive expansion and advanced weaponry, war would consume everything. But he had no idea how to stop them, especially now that a human stood in their midst, watching and assessing, an envoy from the species that might just conquer them all. In the aftermath of the brutal Kruznar attack, 
Patrick Thompson worked day and night to repair the strained relations between humanity and the Orions. He met with Cygnus and the Orion High Council, sharing stories and historical records that shed light on the tumultuous journey of the human species. We came from a world rife with conflict, Patrick explained, his voice somber. War, oppression, and strife plagued our civilization for millennia. It was only through great struggle and sacrifice that we managed to unite and reach for the stars. He leaned forward, his gaze intense. But the galaxy we found was far from welcoming. We encountered hostile species, cosmic horrors, and existential threats at every turn. To survive, we had to arm ourselves, to become warriors as well as explorers. Cygnus listened intently, his feathered brow furrowed in contemplation. The human's words painted a picture of a species forged in the crucible of adversity, their martial prowess a necessity rather than a choice. To further bridge the gap between their peoples, Patrick arranged for a delegation of Orion diplomats to visit Earth. Cygnus was among them, eager to see human civilization firsthand. What they discovered on the human homeworld defied their expectations. The Orions marveled at the rich tapestry of cultures, each with its own unique art, music, and philosophy. They witnessed humans engaged in acts of kindness and compassion, belying the image of a purely violent species. In the Grand Hall of the United Nations, an Orion diplomat named Zephyr listened to a human orchestra perform a hauntingly beautiful symphony. Tears welled in his eyes as the music stirred something deep within his soul. I never imagined humans were capable of such beauty, Zephyr whispered to his companion. Perhaps we have misjudged them. However, the fragile peace was shattered when an Orion extremist, still convinced that humans posed an existential threat, attempted to assassinate Patrick during a joint press conference. As the assassin leaped forward a plasma blade humming in his hand, Patrick's reflexes took over. He sidestepped the attack, disarming the assailant with a swift strike to the wrist. In a matter of seconds, Patrick had the extremist pinned to the ground, alive and subdued. The human security team moved to apprehend the attacker, but Orion authorities intervened, insisting on taking custody of their own citizen. Tensions skyrocketed as weapons were drawn on both sides. Cygnus found himself caught between the human security forces and his own people. The extremists' actions were reprehensible, but the Orion leader still harbored doubts about human intentions. Patrick, his expression calm and controlled, slowly raised his hands in a gesture of peace. We're not here to fight, he said, his voice steady. We're here to build trust and understanding between our species. He turned to Cygnus, his eyes pleading. I know our alliance is fragile, but we must not let the actions of a misguided few unravel the progress we've made. Cygnus hesitated, torn between his instincts and the human's words. Finally, he signaled for his own security to stand down. The extremist will face Orion justice, he declared, his tone firm. But this incident must not derail our efforts to forge a lasting peace. In the tense aftermath of the assassination attempt, Patrick shared a piece of startling intelligence with Cygnus. Human operatives had uncovered evidence that a fanatical Kruznar cult, led by a ruthless warlord known as Zorthak, had acquired an ancient alien weapon capable of annihilating entire star systems. Zorthak plans to use this doomsday device to conquer the galaxy, Patrick revealed, his expression grim. If he succeeds, no species will be safe from his tyranny. Cygnus felt a chill run down his spine at the human's words. The Orions had not engaged in warfare for centuries, their once mighty fleets reduced to mere ceremonial guards. Patrick leaned forward, his gaze intense. We have a chance to stop Zorthak, but only if we work together. Your people's technological brilliance combined with our military expertise could be the key to defeating this threat. Cygnus wrestled with the decision, the weight of his people's future bearing down upon him. Finally, he met Patrick's eyes and nodded. The Orion Republic will stand with humanity against this common enemy. But our alliance remains fragile. We must tread carefully. As the two leaders began to plan for the looming confrontation with Zorthak and his cult, they knew that the fate of the stars hung in the balance. To emerge victorious, they would need to not only devise a cunning battle strategy, 
but also continue to bridge the divide between their species. For in this hostile universe where ancient evils stirred and new threats emerged, cooperation and understanding were the only paths to survival. The Orions and humans would have to learn to trust one another, to see past their differences and forge an unbreakable bond. Only then could they hope to vanquish the darkness that sought to consume them all. Patrick Thompson stood at the head of the war room table, his hands planted firmly on its surface as he leaned forward. I should lead this operation, he said, his voice level but insistent. My people have the combat experience we need. Cygnus's feathers bristled, his eyes narrowing. You expect us to simply hand over command to you, after everything that's happened. This isn't about pride, Patrick shot back. It's about having the best chance of success. When was the last time the Orions fought a real battle? Cygnus hit his fist on the table. How dare you? We may not be warmongering humans, but we are not helpless. The argument escalated, voices rising. Other officers in the room shifted uncomfortably glancing between the two leaders. Arrogant warmonger, Cygnus spat. Naive pacifist, Patrick retorted. An Orion captain stepped forward, raising his hands. Please, both of you, this bickering solves nothing. We must work together. Patrick took a deep breath, forcing himself to calm down. You're right. I apologize for my tone, Cygnus, but we need to figure this out. After tense negotiations, they reached a compromise. Patrick would direct strategy while Cygnus handled operations and logistics. Neither was fully satisfied, but it was workable. In the days that followed, they assembled their strike team. Patrick selected grizzled human veterans, men and women with hard eyes who moved with lethal grace. Cygnus chose Orions who at least remembered their basic combat training. During the first joint training session, the disparity was obvious. The humans effortlessly tore through combat simulations, while many Orions struggled to even hold their weapons properly. This is going to be harder than I thought, Patrick muttered, watching an Orion trooper fumble a reload. He pushed them hard, running grueling drills day after day. The Orions collapsed into exhausted heaps while the humans barely broke a sweat. Tensions simmered as cultural differences became apparent. Why must we train so brutally, an Orion soldier complained. This is barbaric. A human sergeant scoffed. This is nothing compared to real combat. You need to toughen up or you'll get us all killed out there. Patrick and Cygnus pored over star charts and intelligence reports, searching for Zorthak's base. Finally, they pinpointed it on a remote, uncharted world. We'll insert from high altitude, Patrick explained, outlining the plan. Hit them fast and hard before they know what's happening. Cygnus nodded reluctantly. It's risky, but it's our best shot. As launch day approached, doubts plagued both sides. Patrick gathered the troops for a final briefing. I know there's been friction between us, he said, his gaze sweeping the assembled soldiers. But none of that matters now. Out there, we fight as one. Human and Orion, united against a common enemy. The future of the stars rests on us. Let's show the universe what we can do together. With that, they boarded their ships. The mission was underway. Mm. The acrid stench of burning metal and ozone filled Cygnus's nostrils as he stepped over the debris-strewn floor of the command center. Sparks showered from damaged consoles, casting an eerie glow over the grim scene. Bodies lay strewn about, human and Orion alike, their forms still and silent. Cygnus's gaze fell upon Patrick Thompson, sprawled on a makeshift cot. The human's chest rose and fell in shallow, labored breaths. Angry red burns covered his left side, and a hastily applied bandage on his leg was already soaked through with blood. Status report, Cygnus demanded, his voice hoarse. A young Orion officer approached, data pad in hand. Sir, we've lost over 70% of our combined forces. The humans, they bore the brunt of the assault. Cygnus nodded, a lump forming in his throat. He watched as human medics worked frantically to stabilize their wounded comrades. Their movements were precise, practiced, born from countless similar situations. 
A groan drew Cygnus' attention back to Patrick. The human's eyes fluttered open, unfocused at first, then sharpening as they landed on Cygnus. Did we, did we stop them? Patrick rasped. Cygnus leaned in close. We did, but at great cost. Patrick attempted to sit up, wincing in pain. It's not over. There's more. His words were cut short as an urgent voice crackled over the comm system. Intercepted transmission. Priority one. Cygnus rushed to the nearest functioning console, Patrick limping behind him. The message played, filling the air with a chilling declaration from Zorthak himself. The true reckoning is at hand. Our agents have secured the world breakers. Soon we shall cleanse the galaxy in holy fire. Silence fell over the command center as the transmission ended. Cygnus felt the weight of countless lives pressing down upon him. World breakers, Patrick muttered. Ancient superweapons. If they have more than one... We have to stop them, Cygnus said, his voice barely above a whisper. He turned, surveying the battered remnants of their force. Orion troops huddled in small groups, their faces etched with exhaustion and fear. The few remaining humans stood apart, checking weapons and applying field dressings to their wounds. One human soldier caught Cygnus's eye. Despite a nasty gash across his forehead, the man's gaze burned with intensity. He nodded once at Cygnus, a silent affirmation of his readiness to fight on. In that moment, Cygnus understood. This was the crucible that had forged humanity into the indomitable force they were. Centuries of struggle against a hostile universe had honed their will to survive into something transcendent. Cygnus straightened his back, squaring his shoulders. He strode to the center of the room, all eyes turning to him. We face a threat beyond imagination, he began, his voice growing stronger with each word. But we are not alone. Humans and Orions, we stand together against the darkness. We fight not just for ourselves, but for all life in the galaxy. Patrick limped to Cygnus's side, his face pale but resolute. We've come too far to falter now. Whatever it takes, we finish this. Cygnus nodded, meeting the eyes of every soldier, human and Orion alike. Prepare for immediate deployment. We have worlds to save. As the troops mobilized with grim purpose, Cygnus felt a profound shift within himself. The naive dreams of lasting peace had been shattered, replaced by the harsh truth of what it took to survive among the stars. He shared a look with Patrick, a silent understanding passing between them. Whatever horrors lay ahead, they would face them together, human and Orion united against the void. The loading bay doors opened, revealing the cold expanse of space. Cygnus took a deep breath, steeling himself for the battle to come. With Patrick at his side, he stepped forward into the unknown. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.